You commemorated your 41st independence on April 18th, um, quite a journey, so to say. And the country has face, is facing existing political tensions that we know of, of course. Um, what would you say is the situation in Zimbabwe right now, um, especially considering, you know, after four decades, we know of the coup that happened. Um, how would you sum up, you know, the situation in Zimbabwe right now? Okay, firstly, I would like to say that uh, we indeed commemorate uh, 41 years of independence mm -hmm. and also respect uh, the selflessness that was exhibited by the liberation fighters in liberating the country. Mm -hmm. But however, we feel that uh, the aspirations of liberation struggle have been betrayed by the liberation general, which has reneged from uh, the aspirations of uh, the reason why we went to the war in the first place. Mm. Uh, firstly, we also recall, as you have said, that uh, we are a country that came from a military coup in 2017, yes. which is quite a, was quite a sad year for democracy in our country and in our region, uh, because uh, the military must not be involved in civilian affairs. Yes. And secondly, the escalation of the human rights abuses is a cause of concern especially after 41 years of independence, uh, the renege to the democratic uh, practices, the corruption, the plunder of the economic uh, resources of the country yeah. is something that uh, we, us as Zimbabweans, are very much worried about. Mm -hmm. And uh, of late, we've also seen the bastardization of our constitution uh, in that uh, the government of the day mm -hmm. is reneging from uh, you know, in 2013, we had a constitution that the people of Zimbabwe voted for. Yes. But before its full implementation, we have witnessed a systematic attempt by the ruling government to derail the gains that were made thus far. Uh, I'm talking about the amendments that are happening with the constitution yesterday. Yes. They passed the uh, constitution amendment number two. Mm -hmm. While uh, the constitution is yet to be aligned with uh, the existing laws yes. uh, and, and also the introduction of uh, draconian pieces of legislation, namely the Patriotic Act mm -hmm. and the Cyber uh, Security Act, which are all in an attempt to entrench a, a one-party state system in our country. Great. Ms. Mwando, you, you work with 80 civil society organizations. You basically comprise of 80 civil society organizations, and you've been in existence since 2001. What would you say have been some of the most significant strides made in addressing some of the issues in Zimbabwe? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, as we reflect uh, back mm -hmm. and also taking into cognizance uh, the celebration of 44 years, mm -hmm. I think we can, we can also relate uh, on some of the milestones that the Zimbabwean government has made mm -hmm. also in the civil society and also the general populace of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We're looking into uh, women uh, advancement and women's rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might say, uh, at least women from the independence to date, we are now no longer the minority. We are now no longer the, we are now no longer uh, oppressed as a, a perpetrated or a perpetrated by patriarchy. Mm -hmm. At least we are now able to stand as women and also speak about our rights. But I think the, sh the continued shrinking space, the democratic space in Zimbabwe is also threatening that those efforts in terms of uh, ensuring the advancement of women because uh, women are not uh, really privileged to participate in political and public life because of uh, the violence that is continuing every day. And the women's voices and also even the civil society voices mm -hmm. is not be able to be heard because of uh, the, uh, the environment which is not really conducive for the participation and also for the freedom of, uh, of, of speech is uh, stipulated in our constitution. So it makes it very difficult for, to mm -hmm. really celebrate independence in this and also reflect from 2001 and say uh, what have we done if the civil society we've been trying very hard mm -hmm. to be involved and also to make sure that all across sectors uh, the voices of citizens are heard and are speaking really to the issues that concerns them. Yeah. So but I think in, in trying to do that it has become a very uh, limiting challenge in terms of really ensuring that our issues uh, when we talk about uh, participation when we also talk about uh, speaking out on issues of concern mm -hmm. we are faced with uh, retrogressive uh, forces that are mm -hmm. also hinder us in terms of silencing the voice of uh, the majority yeah. so you see that uh, in terms of uh, the democratic spaces which I was talking about 
it has been thwarted since independence. And when you are talking about the efforts that we made yes. 2001 to date, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, are, we regret. Uh, we are in a regression because we feel that it's the efforts that has been put to waste. Yes. That which we've been anticipating to see to date as we celebrate 41 years, mm. I think we, are, we, 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 have, we haven't achieved much. Mm. It's like that all the gains have been rolled back yeah, so by right. the environment that is really not allowing mm. the, the voices of the citizens to be heard yeah. and yeah. to fully in, involved in, in the nemo, national democratic processes. Yeah. And another question would be, you know, what would be the way forward? You know, how are we looking at you know, addressing some of these issues and of course um, getting past them? I think blessing is also alluded to yes. that. Mm -hmm. To say, I think uh, we, we celebrated in 2013 that we have now our democratic constitution as Zimbabweans for the first yes. time mm -hmm. in the history. So if the constitution is respected and if the, uh, the constitution is fully implemented, I think we'll get there because I feel that there are sections in the constitution that uh, clearly speaks about uh, uh, the... Uh, the observance of human, uh, of, of, of human rights. Mm -hmm. And we feel that the constitution is not being adhered to and it's not fully implemented. So that's why we feel, uh, I mean, we see ourselves in, in circles because it's like when we want to really uh, go by the constitution, it's not being observed, it's not being recognized as an, inst as an instrument that is there to safeguard women, human rights. Mm -hmm. Because the major setback, I think, in Zimbabwe is now uh, the non-observance of our uh, human rights. Very it's much. like the, the continued mm -hmm. violation of human rights, but in the constitution, it's very clear yeah. that the rights of uh, we have, uh, 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 the rights to freedom of speech, for uh, for example, mm -hmm. freedom of assembly, freedom mm -hmm. of association, yeah. but that is not happening in the practical. Very much so we, we we really encourage our, our government that they should observe the constitution. Mm -hmm. And they should uh, observe the, 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 the human rights Very much so right. that at least we are free as Zimbabweans to participate in democratic, democratic. processes mm -hmm. without fear of being victimized or of fear of being silenced by the other forces. Very much so. Mr. Baba, when you, you currently have a delegation um, from your coalition in, in Namibia. Perhaps you can speak to us about the purpose of your visit and perhaps some of your engagements um, during your time here. Well, basically, the crisis in Zimbabwe coalition is embarked on a regional uh, mission yes. that is uh, to the countries that are neighboring our country, the countries that are in SADC, mm -hmm. but with the sole purpose of, uh, you know, rejuvenating people-to-people -people solidarity. Mm -hmm. As we are aware, during the liberation uh, struggle, the role of the frontline states in uh, liberating Swapo, mm -hmm. liberating Namibia, for instance, mm -hmm. in liberating uh, Zimbabwe, yes. it was, there was a realization that uh, Mozambique, for instance, cannot be free when Zimbabwe was still under colonial rule. Exactly. So that is uh, what premises our coming here to say that uh, we need that kind of solidarity that existed during the liberation struggle, that uh, the situation that is in Zimbabwe, yes. it has a potential to cause a regional crisis, a humanitarian crisis. We've seen the exodus of Zimbabwe that are coming here and already is, is creating a lot of problems mm -hmm. in terms of... Uh, the sharing of the economic resources uh, for Namibia, mm -hmm. the same that is happening in, 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 in South Africa. But more importantly, you are, I'm sure you're also aware of the situation that is happening in Mozambique, yes, uh, yeah. the insurgency that is there in the northern province of Cabo Delgado, mm -hmm. which also is a threat to regional, soli you know, regional uh, uh, security. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying as a crisis mobile coalition, we want to rally the civic society regionally so that we have coordinated uh, responses in terms of uh, pressurizing our governments to mm. respect firstly the rule of law and also to promote peace and stability in the region. Mm. Which is all, you know, fair and well, but there seems to be this, uh, I don't even know how to put it, uh, this, you, you know, in as much as we're pushing for solidarity in SADC, so to say, um, there seems to be this reluctance from member states in, 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 in getting involved um, with each, each other's affairs. Um, even look at the insurgency in Mozambique that you, that you just re referred to. Do you feel that, you know, we can actually, you know, fully practice solidarity or is it just something that, you know, heads of states say uh, when delivering a speech? I don't think so. I think that uh, Sadiq uh, has and still has a role to play. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they played a pivotal role 
especially uh, the 2008 uh, Zimbabwean crisis, and we ended up having a government of national unity. Uh, the DRC intervention was also the brainchild of, of SADC. And recently, the meeting of the, the Troika meeting that happened in Mozambique, I think it's a, one of the first steps in arresting uh, the situation that is happening in Cabo Delgado. The mere fact that they are deploying a technical team it also means that it's more like a, 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 an assessment a, a process yeah. to see the kind of intervention that uh, SADC uh, has to play. So we can't really say uh, that uh, we, the, it, SADC is a toothless uh, bulldog, mm -hmm. but of course uh, there are issues of sovereignty mm -hmm. that, that comes into play. But uh, more importantly, we've seen SADC playing a very, very big role in terms of maintaining peace and stability in the region. And thus, we still encourage them to be able to step in when they realize that uh, there is a situation that is happening, that is degenerating in any of its member states. Very much so. Ms. Momando, um, you referred to the growing statelessness um, that's happening to, to you know, Zimbabweans. Um, we see you know, Zimbabweans you know, seeking um, refuge in other countries, so to say. Um, well, firstly, what is your impression on this and what are we doing in this regard um, to curtail this growing statelessness? In? I think it's a very sad situation where we have uh, Zimbabweans leaving their own country to seek uh, solace in other countries yes. because I feel if we become together as citizens of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, we, you know, we will become a, a strong force. But moving away from the country, mm -hmm. I think it also reduces the strength or the efforts True. that citizens are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, this movement is not by choice rather, mm -hmm. but I think it's the situation that is forcing them. Yeah. But what I would encourage my fellow Zimbabweans who are also uh, in, in embarking on that, is that uh, we are not safe, mm -hmm. right? We are looking for, for, for security and safety yes. protection uh, uh, on our lives. But I think there's need for the government also to realize that because if you are losing citizens, for example, from the country, mm -hmm. and in Zimbabwe, we have a waste situation that we have many of our, 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 our fellow uh, citizens who have moved to South Africa, UK, and other, uh, other things. And it's not affecting only that kind of a situation, but in terms of the development of the country, yes. we are also suffering brain drain where we have our skilled personnel leaving the country to go to other countries and also enhance and develop other countries. But what about the, uh, the, the, the country, their country, Zimbabwe? Yeah, so sure. we, are, we, are, we are losing, and if I, the government can only realize that it's not, it's we are creating another situation, and we are think we are solving a situation, mm -hmm. but rather at the end of the day, we are going to really lose as a country in terms of our skilled personnel. We are, even development in the country yes. we are also living. And also in terms of the consented efforts that citizens are also required to, to have in terms of uh, advocating for the issues that concerns them. We yeah. also uh, feel that our number is being dis decreasing and even the, the, you know, the, the disgruntlement of the civil society in terms of you know, uh, the fear yes. of, uh, of the unknown to say, what, uh, what is it take for me if I, I get involved in such kind of activities. Yeah. So it's a, it's a whole lot of confusion in terms of how we can proceed as a country, but my encouragement to the government is that let's realize that and be able to solve one problem once and for all. Very much so. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Mr. Baba, as we conclude this discussion this morning, just um, as of course we learned the latest Press Freedom, Freedom Index um, shows that you know, Namibia has retained its number one position um, in Africa. Uh, when you look at, you know, the proximity to Zimbabwe, you know, literally a stone throw away um, and the, the freedom in terms of press that we're enjoying here. We know the situation in your country and Namibia will be hosting the World Press Freedom Day celebrations this year from the 29th to the 3rd of May. How high up the agenda of your coalition is, you know, freeing media in Zimbabwe? Because we all know the important role that the media can play in telling the Zimbabwean story, in rallying that support, you know, that regional support. How high up the agenda is, is, is you know, the, the freedom of the media um, for your coalition? Uh, basically, I can say that uh, Zimbabwe has been one of uh, the countries in SADC and in the world which has a record mm -hmm. of uh, you know, press freedom abuses, mm -hmm. uh, journalists being arrested uh, day and night, 
uh, media houses uh, being closed, mm -hmm. citizens being arrested for Facebook posts, yes. which is quite a, a regression uh, of uh, you know the 41 years that we you know commemorating. Yes. But I would say that uh, one of the reasons why we also chose to come here is to learn the best practices. Uh, Namibia has shown that it's a beacon of hope and uh, among us, uh, you know, us here in the region. And we hope yeah. that uh, during their engagement, that is SWAPO and ZANU-PF, are able to tell each other the truth mm -hmm. in terms of the realization that citizens also yeah. have a voice and citizens have a voice to contribute to the development of the country. When citizens criticize the government, it does not mean that we, we don't like the government. Yeah. It means that we want the government to adhere to the right practices of governance, to the right practices of uh, you know, uh, democratic uh, rule. And we hope that uh, ZANU-PF is also going to learn to take a leaf from the trajectory that uh, SWAP has traveled yeah. over the years, which is something that is commendable yeah. in as far as press freedom is concerned.